Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this webinar organized by the Belgian Foreign Trade Agency and its partners, the FPS Foreign Affairs, Flanders Investment and Trade, l'Agence Wallonne à l'exportation et aux investissements étrangers, and Hub Brussels. It takes place on the occasion of the release of our new sector publication, Belgian Entertainment Technology. We have a charge agenda for the coming hour, but just allow me to quickly run through a few frequently asked questions. First of all, all the slides of the speakers will be made available. You receive them via email and find them on our website together with the sectoral publication, Belgian Entertainment Technologies. This webinar is recorded and will be released on our website as well. Uh, the sexual publication Belgian Entertainment Technologies will be made available just following this webinar. Um, this webinar will end with a Q&A. If you have a question for one of our speakers, you just put it in the Q&A together with the name of the speaker you address it to. In case your question won't be covered during this webinar, we will answer you at a later stage. To kick off this webinar, I have the pleasure to welcome my colleague Lorenzo Van Elsen, International Trade Analyst at the Belgian Foreign Trade Agency, and who was in charge of this study. He will go through the main findings. Lorenzo, the floor is yours. Thank you, Christelle. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here with us today. I will first start by uh, sharing my presentation. OK. So welcome, everyone. Uh, I will uh, first start my presentation by giving you an introduction to entertainment technology uh, before uh, discussing the driving branches within the entertainment industry and the trends to watch uh, within the entertainment industry. Even though uh, the ways to entertain ourselves have changed throughout history, entertainment has always been associated with the idea of doing something to amuse ourselves. And indeed, although the essential ingredients of entertainment have always been the same, uh, namely providing emotions, uh, the entertainment industry itself has evolved over time. And to better understand the forces that have come together to shape the future trajectories of entertainment technologies, we will first take a brief look at uh, the history of entertainment technologies using a few key moments that show that uh, technological changes have historically been at the source of great innovations in uh, the entertainment industry. So the first phase I would say is the pre-digital age or analog age. And the first genuine entertainment technology was Thomas Edison's uh, phonograph that was developed in 1877 as a device for the mechanical and analog recording and reproduction of sound. Uh, this technology enabled sound to be successfully transmitted over the air uh, to a large audience and uh, developed later as the first public radio broadcast in the 1910s. Uh, the early pioneers of radio broad broadcasting saw the benefit of the technology in providing one-way information, but also entertainment content to a large audience. And following uh, the emergence of radio broadcasting, other major entertainment content, such as motion pictures and television, uh, became a major part of uh, everyone's daily life. As you know, early motion pictures had neither sound nor color and uh, consisted mostly of single scenes without any stagecraft of any kind. So therefore, this period clearly signaled not only the birth of modern motion picture technology, but also the beginning of the a form of creative art of storytelling through moving pictures. And after the end of World War II, countries started to adopt national television standards as the TV content industry took off. Uh, unlike motion pictures, uh, which largely remains a storytelling medium, television began to transform into a mixture of information dispensary and traditional uh, vari variety shows. So by the early 60s, 
uh, television had become uh, the go-to source uh, for information as well as uh, a form of uh, entertainment medium. Uh, consequently, since the start of the digital era, the way we communicate with each other, look for information or entertain ourselves has uh, completely changed. Uh, the 70s so the start of this new exciting period with uh, the emergence of the personal computer or the digital, digital camera and um, consumers uh, embraced new forms of entertainment technologies such as uh, CDs or DVDs in the 80s and 90s. And this digital age also made possible a new form of entertainment uh, technology, electronic uh, games. And whereas uh, motion pictures and television mostly are mostly passive forms of entertainment, video games uh, demand a substantially deeper emotional engagement of players and uh, uh, a constant uh, interaction with uh, the medium. However, this impact of the analog to digital transition of the entertainment industry was uh, dwarfed by uh, the advent of the internet by the beginning of the 21st century. So as a matter of fact, the digital revolution of uh, portable and uh, personal mobile devices that can perform the functions of a PC, of a television, of a music player, and even of a mobile phone uh, signify that consumers also choose to experience entertainment portably, even though that was on a smaller screen. And so with uh, nearly every electronic device having built-in internet access capability and capacity, uh, entertainment itself uh, was undergoing a profound uh, transformation. So one thing uh, seems certain with the advent of the internet is that uh, the continued digitalization uh, of the entertainment industry will create new exciting and engaging content for consumers. And that's all based on uh, technological improvements. So we'll now uh, discuss uh, three driving branches within the entertainment industry, which are video gaming, audiovisual and media technology and sports uh, technology. Uh, as you may know, video games are the biggest worldwide entertainment sector today, earning, earning much more uh, globally than the film or uh, music industries combined. Uh, in addition, these uh, video game technologies are being applied in numerous other sectors uh, ranging from film to healthcare uh, to professional training courses, uh, etc. So the importance of this uh, sub branch will uh, therefore only increase uh, in the coming years. On the following charts, you can see that the video gaming industry was estimated to be worth um, for about 178 billion US dollars in 2021 which represent an increase of almost 15% compared to 2020. And according to the same forecast, uh, the number should reach uh, 268 billion US dollars by 2025, which is nearly three times as high the value reached uh, 10, time, uh, 10 years earlier in 2015. So among the different types of video games, uh, the console gaming market continues to grow, but it is the mobile gaming that has become the largest gaming market in the world. And of course, in the third uh, place, PC, PC gaming also continues to be popular. Uh, the global market value of the video games industry was generated by almost 3 billion gamers in uh, 2021. And this number should increase to 3.2 billion gamers in 2023. And the majority of these gamers uh, are based in the Asia Pacific. Uh, and almost 25% uh, of the gamers are based in Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. Um, since uh, the pandemic and uh, the various lockdowns, uh, we see that the, the gaming uh, industry uh, has uh, had a substantial boost in, in Belgium over the, the last two to three years. So in 2020, uh, we uh, saw that the gaming companies in Belgium 
grew, uh, the turnover of the gaming company in Belgium grew by 17% uh, to 82 uh, million uh, euros. And over the past few years, the Belgian video games industry has indeed uh, developed into a thriving sector, swamped with talented uh, developers, entrepreneurs, and studios uh, spread around the three regions of our country. And uh, the creation of some of the most successful games uh, and uh, developed by Belgian entrepreneurs can also be explained by the quality of the training available in, in Belgium that are uh, given by some of the universities mentioned on this uh, slide. The second uh, subcategory is audiovisual and media technology. A new, uh, exciting and engaging media and audiovisual entertainment content is increasingly uh, accessible and available uh, to European consumers, especially uh, thanks to the development of new technologies and financial incentives. In Belgium, the implementation of national financial in incentives, such as the tax shelter for audiovisual creation, has enabled the sector to raise public investments for the creation of new audiovisual productions. It has allowed companies to invest in audiovisual works, movies, uh, or a series, and to obtain tax relief in return. Uh, in this way, the tax shelter for audiovisual production uh, represents uh, over 1 billion euros invested in, since 2004 by over 2,000 uh, investors. And interesting to, to know is that uh, recently a consensus has been found uh, within the Belgian government to extend uh, this type of tax shelter mechanism to uh, the video games industries. And that could come into force as soon as 2023. And finally, the sports uh, technology uh, subcategory, which is also creating growth in the sports industry, uh, allows for more personalized experiences and helps athletes with their performances. As a result, uh, the global sports technology market was valued at almost 18 billion US dollars in 2021 and is expected to reach 40 billion dollars uh, by uh, 2026. The sports technology market has also been growing significantly in Belgium for several years now, and more and more uh, Belgian companies are active in this sub-branch, um, especially during major sporting events, uh, such as the Tokyo Olympic Games recently or the UEFA uh, European Football Championship, during which a large number of Belgian companies were able to make a name for themselves and showcase their expertise in sports technology. Uh, in the study that will be published and released soon after the webinar, you can find a, a comprehensive list of all these Belgian uh, companies which have taken part to uh, some aspects of the organization of the Olympics or the UEFA European Football Championship. And finally, I will conclude by discussing three trends to watch within the entertainment industry. Uh, I will first start with uh, unique live experiences. So in the years to come, consumers will continue to seek out unique live experiences and uh, try to access to personal, personalized entertainment content. So uh, important audiences' expectations for events include uh, participatory experiences, dynamic storytelling, and interactive content. Uh, for example, the possibilities of gamification activities offer exciting ways to boost participation and drive audiences and their engagement. These expectations will be supported by technological innovations, of course, such as um, the introduction of 5G networks and the uh, continuous improvement of CPU processing that serves uh, as enablers of new optimized workflows, such as real-time rendering and exciting entertainment made possible by uh, augmented reality, for example. Uh, the second trend uh, to watch is a uh, trend of NFTs, so of non-fungible tokens, which are uh, unique digital assets created and traded thanks to uh, blockchain technology. 
which have undeniably become more popular in some major industries, such as art, music, gaming, sports, and other forms of collectibles. Although some caution is still advised within this new kind of technology, the opportunities of NFTs uh, are clear and obvious for the different sectors within the entertainment industry and could be uh, groundbreaking. Uh, for example, the development of NFTs has allowed musicians uh, to, bub to publish uh, their pieces of music as a non-fungible token. For instance, last year, uh, King of Leons was the first band to release an album as an NFT. So the entertainment industry will continue to engage in a great deal of NFT innovation and experimentation in the years to come, that is for sure. And finally, lastly, the metaverse. So in recent years, virtual events, performances, and shows have gained in popularity um, because of large parts of society has been placed under lockdowns as a consequence of the, the pandemic, of course. And this has heralded the emergence of the metaverse, which is seen, uh, which is seen uh, by many as the new phase in the evolution of the internet, where the physical world meets with the virtual and augmented world. So in the years to come, the metaverse will increasingly become the venue where we share entertainment experiences with friends, but from the comfort of our homes. And the metaverse will make uh, entirely new forms of entertainment a reality, a virtual reality maybe, and become a prolific technology innovation that can fuel a large number of strategic business opportunities. According to Bloomberg, uh, the metaverse business is, is forecast uh, to be worth 800 billion US dollars by 2024. So that is not uh, something you can neglect. Um, this concludes my presentation. I thank you for your attention. I hope I've entertained you a little, uh, but of course, above all, informed you a lot. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'll pass the word to Valérie Cuvelier of the Foreign Affairs Department. Thank you. Thank you for presenting the main findings, Lorenzo. And I would like now to introduce our federal and regional stakeholders. And we will start with the FPS Foreign Affairs and Mrs. Valérie Cuvelier, advisor at the Directorate of Economic Interests, P3. Uh, Mrs. Cuvelier, the floor is yours. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to be here today to discuss the Belgian entertainment technologies. I'm even more enthusiastic to speak about entertainment technologies since we are now able to realize how big this sector has become in the past few years. Belgian entertainment companies have been able to grow in the recent years despite the global economic challenges. Let's mention, for example, the Belgian video game industry with a 17 percentage rise in its 2020 turnover. The third and the fifth fourth industrial revolutions have brought and bring still new dimensions in our ways of living. For example, what used to be the privilege of few, such as homeworking, is now an uncontested fact. Also, you don't have to go out anymore to be able to watch the latest series of movies at home thanks to the video on demand service. Belgium and the European Union are already involved in various projects regarding those technologies. Let's mention, for example, the initiatives dedicated to the Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, 5G, or the development of a supercomputing ecosystem. At the Belgian level, as early as in 2004, the Belgian federal government acknowledged the importance to develop and protect the entertainment technology sector by introducing the tax shelter. At the international level, many Belgian companies take part in major sports events to bring to the world the expertise in the audiovisual sector. This was the case during the Olympic Games in 2020 or the European Football Championship, and we should take pride in reminding ourselves whenever we watch a sport sequence that the replay technology was conceived in Belgium. The rise of new technologies does not come without risk. 
data breach, cyber attacks, and the protection of personal data are taken with great concern at the federal level. Our vision is to foster potential foreign cooperation in the sector with when the integrity of our interests is guaranteed. Let me finish by saying that cooperation and good coordination in Belgium with the regions on the one hand and within the EU framework on the other hand are essential to provide to the best experience and service to the European entertainment user while guaranteeing a secure environment for them. The rise of the metaverse, non-fungible tokens and cryptocurrencies will require our full attention to measure the full potential and scope of those new trends and act accordingly for the benefits of all. I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mrs. Cuvelier. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm now looking forward to the intervention of Mr. Verbruggen, David Verbruggen, General Manager at the Flemish Games Association, FLEGA. Mr. Verbruggen, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, evening or morning. Um, I will share my screen with you and uh, do a quick presentation of the Flemish games sector. I hope you all see my screen in full should, should work. Um, so we are who we are. I will explain it, what we do. I have some facts and figures, um, the support ecosystem we have in Flanders, tax incentives, and some other USPs of our local uh, sector. So first of all, who we are and what we do, well, we are FLEGA, the Flemish Games Association. We're founded in January 2013, so we'll be celebrating our 10th birthday soon. We have about 70 members. Most of them are game studios. Um, we do networking, sharing, public affairs, of course, content marketing, and we do market data collection and publication. The numbers that have been uh, already cited come from uh, our surveys. We have close collaboration with various regional support partners uh, and also publishers, platforms, other regional and national trade associations. And we work closely together under the banner Belgian Games. Uh, that's, that's our umbrella brand. So some facts and figures about our sector. The company count uh, has been rising for the last few years, as you can see. In 2020, we used a different methodology uh, we only counted uh, from that uh, year on game studios, publishers, service providers, and accelerators, incubators, which meant that uh, we had a little drop off in number of companies. Uh, so we ended on 84 for 2020, and we expect this to rise again as of 2021. Our 2021 numbers will be revealed at Gamescom end of August in uh, Cologne. That's a big, well, the biggest uh, game fair uh, in the world. Overall FTE accounts, same story here, new methodology as of 2020. We have been stagnating for a, a while. Then we had a drop due to the new methodology, but we also expect this number to start rising again, especially also with the uh, uh, intervention of Tech Shelter. More on that later, and it was already mentioned by Lorenzo. Overall turnover, so yes, we had a 70% uh, increase from 2019 to 2020. Unfortunately, this, this was a bit down from the 2018 and 2017 numbers. Those numbers are really high because we had a big release from Larian, which is one of our, well, it's actually our biggest game studio in, uh, in Belgium. This is more information about our support ecosystem. We have many partners. I'm just citing uh, the most important, the key partners for us, but we have other partners too as well, of course. We have Flanders Investment and Trade. Um, they're uh, well known uh, to uh, most of you, I suppose, and uh, we are now the official Flanders Investment and Trade partner uh, for the next five years, so we have an official partnership with them. Uh, we also have public funding for game developers via VAF, Vlaams Audiovisual Fund, so it's an audiovisual fund and they also support game studios. OWEST was already cited uh, before. Digital Arts and Entertainment is voted best game school worldwide for three years already. So this is really important. Uh, a lot of students uh, are studying over there and uh, it's a very important uh, school for us here in, uh, in Flanders. And then we also have the action plan from the Flemish government um, that was launched recently. And it includes also the launch of a dedicated game hub, incubator, accelerator, 
um, and it will launch end of this year, beginning of next year. We have other tax incentives that are, of course, valid for other sectors too, but you can also use them in our uh, sector. And some of these uh, tax incentives uh, are also federal, so uh, it's, it's not only for Flanders. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here, but for instance, uh, we have the usage of partial remuneration for a transfer of copyright results, which you can use, uh, which can downgrade wage costs from about 50 to 15%. Of course, yeah, there are some rules that you have to take into account. You also have R&D employment benefits, and uh, there is a net innovation income uh, that can be uh, sheltered from the corporate income tax, uh, which also results in an uh, effective tax rate of only 4.4%. Um, the presentation will be shared, uh, if I understand correctly. If you click the logos, you will be linked to an article with more information about these specific uh, tax incentives. And then the big one, of course, is tax shelter. So we learned uh, indeed from uh, our government that they reached an agreement on a tax shelter. So it should be launched by latest uh, January 1st here in, uh, in Belgium. And we are looking forward to it because it is a system that already proved a lot of success in the audiovisual and even also the performing arts uh, sectors. So it's going to create a lot of local uh, employment for us. And it is also creating a lot of cross media and VFX opportunities. Uh, mind you that we have kind of a synergies between uh, the virtual, uh, uh, well, the visual effects world uh, and the video game sector. Um, for instance, uh, scenes in uh, series like The Mandalorian or, or uh, movies like Blade Runner are being created with game technology, game engines. So you effectively have people from the game sector going through the movie sector and, and starting to work over there. And we think that Tech Shelter will be an excellent vehicle for those synergies too. Um, so that is something we are really looking forward to. And it's something we have been endeavoring uh, for years uh, to have this Tech Shelter extended to video games. A rundown of some other eye-catching USBs of our sector really quickly. And I hope I, I was uh, in time. We have a very rich comic book heritage in, uh, in Belgium, in Flanders. Uh, we have the famous comics, Suske and Wiske, Hilde Hede, Lucky Luke, and all those. Uh, so we think that is something that can really help us in creating uh, engaging stories and, and, and um, characters. Uh, so that is something that's really interesting. Of course, the biggest Flemish and also the biggest Belgian video game studio, Larian Studios, I already mentioned them before. They create AAA uh, video games. Uh, so they play in the big league with the big companies. Divinity Original Sin 2 was a big one. And now they are working on Baldur's Gate 3, which is actually a license they were granted from Wizards of the Coast, which is actually something that is uh, very, very special. If a company gives a big franchise like that, to uh, another company to develop it that, that's really uh, special. They have five satellite studios also around the globe in Ghent, Barcelona, Canada, Ireland, and Malaysia. And they also had one in uh, St. Petersburg, but of course you understand that they, they had to uh, close shop uh, over there, unfortunately. Then we have Preview Labs, it's a very interesting company also. They do rapid prototyping. It's interesting to make a quick prototype of a new game before you really launch it, because it makes uh, it takes so much time and money to, to make it. But sometimes you need to be able to show it up front to investors um, or publishers or other companies to explain more what you plan with this video game. It's sometimes not easy to just explain a video game in words and, 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 and a few pictures. Um, they were founded 10 years ago, and they already have a satellite uh, office now in the US, and they work on, on, on uh, major uh, video games, and they also work with major universities uh, on, for instance, anti-smoke uh, VR games. So they do special uh, things. Graphine is a famous company also in uh, Flanders. It has been bought by Unity. Uh, Unity is one of those big game engines I already talked about. Almost 50% of all mobile games in the world are made uh, in Unity. Um, and in 2019, Unity acquired Graphine because they created a, a fast and highly memory efficient texture streaming service, which was ideal uh, to the, the Unity um, assets. And they work for major video game companies such as War Gaming. And then, of course, last but not least, I already mentioned them, OSDIA, they provide top skilled uh, video game profiles for our sector. So that's a good thing too. I invite you to follow us on Twitter at Flega. Uh, 
www.vzw.com. And then you can also visit us on our website, which is flega.be. Thank you very much for uh, your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rubrigan. This was really interesting. And yeah. uh, thank you for your participation today. Uh, I'm now uh, happy to introduce Mr. Pierre Collin, Executive Manager of the Cluster Twist. Mr. Collin. Good afternoon. <laughs> good morning, good evening. I don't know where you are. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Pierre Collin and I am the executive manager of TWIST, the business network born in Wallonia and dedicated to the sports, entertainment and culture market related to uh, the audiovisual sector. Normally, you should have a look on my presentation. Let's go. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the Belgian Foreign Trade Agency for its initiative to highlight the entertainment technology sector, uh, this discrete sector, maybe too discrete sector, maybe too fragmented sector, is definitely a great showcase for Belgium and an unbeatable calling card. Proof of this uh, is the Belgian presence two weeks ago in Saudi Arabia uh, at the Saudi Entertainment and Amusement Expo which was held in Riyadh, and where Belgium was the second largest delegation after the United States, with 12 exhibitors, six companies coming from Wallonia, and six from Flanders. Thank you also to the Wallon Export and Invest Agency for give me, giving me this opportunity to present to you our ecosystem dedicated to the entertainment technology sector. And finally, thank you all for your presence. Uh, the purpose of my presentation is to give you an overview of the enter entertainment technology sector in order to allow you to understand what, are, what our markets are and what are the impacts of the technologies in these markets. Uh, just a small introduction, short introduction related to Twist, which is a business cluster. We gather 100 companies. We were born in 2007. Uh, and we represent more or less 5,000 jobs. Uh, my, speaking time, my speaking time being very short, don't get me wrong, this is not a critic. I will go to the point and before talking about the why, let me first introduce you to the what with a short video highlighting the narrow of some Walloon company. You should have some sound and image.
So it was the what, now we are going to deep into the why. Uh, as you may understand, our products and services are so numerous that it, it won't be possible for me to deal with them one by one. I will then rather focus on market, which means on the couples content plus technologies. So the first question is, what does mean entertainment to us? For sure, it means happiness. And David told about the great IPs that we have in Belgium related to the comics books industry. Uh, for sure, so the first ingredient of the success is the creative IP. And then comes from the uh, technological IP. Here I have uh, highlighted two companies, the Smurfs and uh, the company which is called Vigo Universal. Why? Because they have just closed the deal to develop virtual reality games uh, in which, of course, the Smurfs are the heroes. So all my speech is around creative IP and technological IP. I think this is something that you have to keep in mind. Uh, Twist uh, ha has a long experience. We finally decided a couple of years ago to develop a strategy oriented towards the contents, live sport and e-sport, live music, live TV show, museum, live show, theme parks, and of course, cinema and TV series. Uh, this is something that we have decided to do. Uh, after conducting several analyses, uh, and we wanted to go much more into the into the content, which is for the moment the uh, engines of the growth of our industry. So uh, these contents have some spillover effects on other uh, topics, which are the smart venues, the places where the fans can attend some entertainment, sport, cultural events. So it could be around stadium, racetracks, museum, and so on, the aquatic attraction parks, for sure. And also regarding the smart city, as the fans have to go to the smart venues and they want to uh, start living their experience, directly leaving their home. So uh, these two topics are much more about technologies uh, and illustrate also the fact that uh, this is a mix between technologies and content. Um, in order to understand uh, better the impact of innovation uh, and entertainment technology on this market, here is the value chain uh, where most of our companies are involved. I think this is important for everybody to understand the whole value chain uh, and how it works. So here I have synthesis, of course, and with four main links. The first one is related to the IP owners, uh, namely the creators and those who produce these uh, creators. If you are talking about music festival, it's about festival organizers. If you are talking about sports, it's about sports federations. If we are, the, if we are um, at the sports federation, why? Because they are the organizers of sports competition. If you are talking about live performances, it's about executive producer and so on. And each time I've tried to put some key elements that help you to understand what could be the uh, needed technologies or impacts of the technologies of, uh, on these links. Uh, the second link is the, uh, uh, in the chain is made up of the distributors of this creative uh, IPs. We are, of course, thinking of TV channels, uh, but also of the physical places where this event takes place, stadium, racetracks, museum, amusement parks, and so on. Uh, the third link is in the value chain is made of those who finance the value chain, media agencies, brands, sponsors, notably. Uh, and finally, of course, the fourth link is related to the technologies and the R&D research and uh, development uh, really needed to uh, help us to develop uh, innovative and new products. Um, so uh, no pain, no game. In order to support the development of our ecosystem, we can count on strong expertise in the field uh, of R&D uh, with universities and their dedicated labs with uh, R&D centers, public and private. But also, uh, we can count on strong expertise in the field of education with training centers, technical colleges, and universities. Here, I've tried to be uh, not exhaustive in, with the logos. Uh, of course, uh, we
without money, it's complicated to uh, be really successful. So we can count also of the support of investment funds. Uh, finally, let me go just very quickly to a short use case, which has been developed by Dreamwall, huh, which is a subsidiary of the RTBF and Dupuy, so the, the comic uh, publisher uh, based in Charleroi. But so, uh, and here, the, 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 the goal of this uh, use case was to demonstrate the feasibility of installing a virtual set in the middle of a pitch in a very uh, short time uh, in order to convince uh, one of the customer, a TV channel based in India, uh, which bore the rights of the Indian Cricket Championship to work with them, and they managed to convince them. This is the history. So what do we have here? On the left side, you have the rear view. On the right side of your screen, uh, you have the uh, spectator view. Uh, uh, this is just how you, the way uh, we are building through a key, uh, a key, uh, a key set. Uh, some uh, false, I would say, uh, studios. Uh, here you have 4G teleportation. So the guy on the on the left in the middle is not really on the pitch. Huh? It has been tele uh, teleported. And on the right side, you have the view of the spectator. Uh, we have done also some proof of concept related to augmented reality features. So um, the, 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 the Belgian team is not really on the, on the pitch. Huh? I guess you understood that. So, but the difference between the left and the right, if the goal was to demonstrate that this uh, product worked under the sun on the left and under the moon in the right, so in a darkness environment. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, don't hesitate to uh, contact me at any moment, night and day. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Collin. This was a very impressive and immersive presentation. And we know more about entertainment just now. And finally, I'm very happy to introduce Mrs. Emily Thierry, audiovisual advisor and CCS with the Cluster Play Brussels at Hub Brussels. Mrs. Thierry, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, I'll share my screen with you all. Um, so the Hub Brussels Agency is in charge of uh, Brussels Capital Region economic development and international promotion for entrepreneurs. Um, its 300 collaborators provide customized support in general expertise and, and within thematic clusters. Uh, one of those is dedicated to the audiovisual uh, business in Brussels, Play Brussels, more about it in a minute, um, while the, another cluster, Software.Brussels, has several members active in the audiovisual or entertainment sectors as well. Hub Brussels and its clusters are one major piece in a regional coherent support system available to all links uh, in the value creation chain namely producers, post-production companies, distributors, Brussels-based festivals, and so on. Um, next to the support for companies in their creation, growth, and internationalization uh, provided at Hub Brussels, uh, funding can also be um, found through Screen Brussels for traditional or innovative audiovisual projects that incur uh, all or part of their expenditures in Brussels. Structural funding can also be found uh, for growing uh, Brussels audiovisual companies through loans uh, managed by finance and invest. And last but not least, R&D funding, including innovation in the audiovisual field, is available through Innoviris. Several regional information channels have been created to help uh, new or existing businesses, such as the 1819 um, for local entrepreneurs. So yeah, as I was saying, um, besides the support provided by Hub Brussels, uh, we also have information channels for uh, foreign companies and investors uh, considering setting up offices in Brussels uh, at y.brussels. 
Uh, on a side note, the Brussels Capital Region, supported by European funding, is building the future media center frame that will help the region to reinforce the media, audiovisual, and communication sectors. It will bring an entire creative ecosystem together in a single building with the regional television, a training institute, a regional support structure, a co-working space, and a specialized business center, all benefiting from shared facilities. And um, of course, one of the um, selling points is that frame will be located in the new Media Park Brussels project that involves the creation of a whole new district to promote the development of broadcasting, media, and creative industries in Brussels. And the ambition of this project is to develop a urban park of 9.5 hectares around the future new headquarters of public Belgian televisions, RTBF and VRT. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Hub Brussels officiates most of its support for the entertainment industry by way of a cluster uh, recently renamed Play. Um, we aim to support any type of content for any type of screen, whatever the purpose, uh, whatever the medium, whatever place in the, in the chain of expertise, or the type of business from starter to mature companies. Most importantly, we help all formats, including traditional ones such as cinema and TV, whether fiction, documentary uh, or animation but also new types of contents and technologies, such as immersion, video game, podcasts, and so on. Um, the ecosystem in Brussels consists of over 400 audiovisual businesses, including over 20 companies or freelancers active in game development, uh, over 20 companies or freelancers uh, active in immersive contents, and of course, uh, innumerable service and talent providers, uh, including post-production and VFX. All this accounts for over 20,000 direct jobs with uh, 1.3 billion euros in yearly revenue up until uh, 2019. And um, we are happy to, uh, we are happy that over uh, 160 businesses are part of our cluster. A few examples of the type of support we provide, either individual or collective. Um, project validation by helping with business plans or business models. Subsidies and financing, either through public funds, R&D, venture capital, and so on. Strategic analysis, such as market research, market identification and benchmarking, or the implement implementation of a distributor network. The identification of local and international partners, for example, through the Enterprise Europe Network. And we also provide techn technological assessment for financing organizations to support companies' application um, to the regional public administration, administration sorry, or several guarantee and starter funds. We promote businesses on our website and social networks, and we regularly inform our members and non-members, such as uh, OPNS and Exhibition Hub, uh, who have been interviewed for the study. We take part and invite our members in uh, working groups at the moment on export and international actions, for example. And and we either co-organize or invite members to networking events, workshops, and trade missions, as well as major international events. Hub Brussels also provides expert support on business matters and advanced support for brokerage events. Focusing on immersive formats and video game in Brussels, um, the ecosystem can boast of a large network, including dozens of companies active in providing services, developing new technologies, or creating content, be it in entertainment, um, corporates, photo, video, three, um, 360 video, uh, or sound. And you can read about uh, a few companies, such as The Pack, 
and demute in the study uh, that is released at the moment. Um, Brussels welcomes dozens of in national or international events, markets and festivals related to different sectors of the entertainment industry, including VR and video games. And it is also home to communities such as games.brussels, VR meetups, and the Belgian, as well as the European eSports Federation. It is important to note, um, as David Verbruggen uh, said earlier, that we also work in close collaboration with uh, national federations such as Belgian Games. Education is also a major part of the ecosystem with universities as well as private and public vocational training uh, organizations, while big players and in infra infrastructure have offices or facilities in Brussels, um, such as Google, Sony, or the Belgian uh, company Proximus, uh, to name a few. I hope this quick panorama got you interested in the opportunities in Brussels. You can meet us um, at a couple of international events, such as the Venice Production Bridge or uh, Gamescom in Köln, in, in, Köln, in Germany. Uh, if not, you can always send us uh, an email or reach, uh, reach us through uh, our several uh, channels. Thank you for all your attention. Yes, thank you, Mrs. Terry. And it's now time to start with uh, the questions. Um, yes, we will start with the question of uh, Mr. Arras, and I'll read his question. Uh, One billion uh, was invested since 2004, and can we know uh, can we know the value created by this investment? Meaning the income of those movies, the number of views, the export numbers, if any of the movies created by Tax Shelter. Uh, if any of our speakers wants to answer this question, don't hesitate. Otherwise, I, I will leave Lorenzo, perhaps to, to sketch a begin, begin of answer, Lorenzo. Yes, yes, I'm still there. <laughs> uh, I do not. Uh, have a direct answer to the value created or the income of uh, the movies that have uh, benefited from the support uh, of the Belgian tax shelter for audiovisual production. However, I can refer to uh, two um, websites, I would say. Uh, the first one being uh, the website of the Foreign Public Service Finance, who is the contact point for the tax shelter. I've also um, uh, transferred the contact details uh, of a person working in uh, the fiscal department for foreign investments of this FPS to um, uh, the person who has asked the question. And I can also refer to uh, the website taxshelter.be on which you can find a catalog of all the movies that have benefited from uh, this type of financial uh, support. Um, so if you have a specific movie in mind of which you want to know uh, maybe the, the, the income or the, the number of people that have uh, uh, gone to the theater to watch that movie, you can find the, the movie online. So it's really a comprehensive catalog with, the, yeah, I don't even know how many pages because you have uh, pages one to 10 and then dot, dot, dot. So it continues. So I think that's, uh, already a reference. And of course, you can read the study to know, to know more about uh, this type of tax incentive. Maybe I can add uh, some clues also to the questions. So first of all, the tax shelter law is the engine of the development of the cinema industry in, in Belgium. It represent more or less 100 million, 140 million euro invested by the private industry into the cinema industry. I think that the average return on investment for the state, uh, for the federal government is around 20%. Uh, we have to say that uh, we have some regional funds in Brussels, uh, in Flanders, and of course in Wallonia, which was the first one to be created a couple of years ago, just before the tax shelter law, so beginning of the 
euros 2000. The, the return on investment for this fund, which are very complementary to uh, the tax shelter fund, uh, bring a, a return on investment for the regions around uh, three to six, seven, eight times the money which is invested into the cinema industry. Uh, hundreds of movies have been produced in Belgium. We just won three awards at the film, Cannes Film Festival. It's not by chance. It's a long story, uh, and it's not possible to give you any uh, numbers related to the export, for sure. I don't have them. I guess it's possible, but I don't have them. But we can say billions of people have watched our cinema. And I'm very humble saying that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Colin. Does someone add something to this question? No. So it's just uh, now time to stop here. As already mentioned, you will find on our website a lot of information. First of all, the sectoral publication itself, uh, the webinar recording, but also uh, the slide of our speakers. And this is brand new three videos of three companies uh, that were interviews specifically for this sectoral uh, publication, uh, amongst other Alterface, Demute, etc. Um, our next webinar will take place on the 2nd of June, so this week, and will be dedicated to trade barriers and sanction, sanction regimes. Uh, it's about Russia and Ukraine, indeed. I thank you all for your participation and presence at our webinar today and wish you a pleasant reading of the study and screening of the, the videos. Have a good day. Bye.